All right, just getting set up again. wonder how I do I don't want the embeds remove embeds there you go removed obsidian seven thing So many things. What I probably should do first, I'll start my timer, because I'm working now. What I really need is a new group in here. put all the time blocking stuff in it. I'll make it easy though. That's it. Welcome, my single viewer. I'm focusing on time blocking today. Open up my time blocking note. That's the main one. There we go. The goal is to work on research for a course. On time blocking, which will come out in a while. the link of what I'm looking at right now in here.
Interesting that Cal Newport plans uh, first thing in the morning. She planned the week before. So I had no what I'm doing. Hey, the funky mosquito. I've already done some research on time blocking before and last week's stream. And we're just kind of going through more, see what's up. Maybe do some more. Or might, not maybe, but trying to really hone in on what I'm going to do for the course. I'm just collecting information right now. Uh, this is the article I'm looking at right now. If you want to check it out. Not every article is gonna get into the research because I already have some of it. So I just don't need more. Like I don't need another, what is time blocking necessarily? I'm looking for tidbits that are different in this um, than what I already have. calendar time blocking believe in that that looks too ugh, I hate those things looks like not nearly fine-grained enough to do be any useful at all I'm just gonna work during this chunk I know she's Doing some time blocking, of leisure time, free time. Eh. What's the quick key to tag? There's got to be one. Carrot enter? Or control enter, I guess. nothing comes up all right info
Have I read Cal's blog post on how he does a weekly plan? Yes, I have, I think. The importance of planning every minute of your workday. I believe that would be it. And also working back through deep work as well. Maybe this one. So that's this one. I'm working back through deep work again because uh, it had seems to have some stuff that I will want in it. So I'm taking notes because I didn't do Zettelcast when I read it the first time or the second time. This is my third read probably, and I'm taking better notes on it so that I can see what it is, like how it pertains to time blocking well. So, and really, I want to answer. And I'm trying to develop some questions here. You can see. Like, how long should your time block be? Is it 90 minutes? Is it 20 minutes? Is it whatever? Um, how do you order time blocking? What I normally do is I do family and external stuff first. Then I do fitness, like my workouts. And then I can tell what time I have for work in a day. Um, when should you be building your time blocks is another, I think, important question. As in the night before, the week before, the day, whatever. Uh, what do you do when it gets blown up? Right? How do you reschedule it? Those are some of the questions. And then probably tools. bullet journal tick tick does it as well uh, stuff like that there's a kind of where I'm going at this point not even a block technique uh, so the article we're looking at now is this one not that I necessarily will take notes on it but actually an interesting tidbit right here when you start working on your own there's like no real marked end to your day unless you're really careful well i find kids help that a lot my kids enforce an end to my day because they want my time which is cool and i'm not complaining about that in any means it's just outside of you know kids take a lot of work but it's good that they require my time and that i give it to them brought it in cool since I'm inside my folder I brought it right in for me that's nice so we'll shout out later the culture of pedagogy 90 minute time blocking I think I'm gonna keep this one specifically because of the 90 minute thing that answers the question about how long should it be looking down at my watch but I had a countdown for making hamburgers for lunch so somebody asks me every time that's taught um, because of reasons electron apps don't let you do text snippet fill in with Mac OS system text snippets so I've got to use something else posted by Mira 
There's our full name in there. Not really. Funny when I do this on my iPad, I actually have a script that builds this whole thing out for me. I don't have to do it. There you go. I don't know if I've read this one actually. I certainly heard about it in his podcast. Like he's talked about this the whole time. Um, let's grab it. I don't really want PDF. Web archive. I'll stick that into time blocking later. Thanks. What am I doing? Capture link. I actually think I have that one. How do we do this? Info. No. I have to make this bigger. And I can see the side. Yeah, so I already had that one. Let's delete it. I don't agree with that, that lots of knowledge workers can do a good, like most of the day's work in 90 minutes, like peak productivity, because you barely get it. It's actually why I like my time block this afternoon is to study and like, so that I focus.
Open Guild game and one of his writing techniques is he's welcome to go sit at the bench or something that he writes at and do nothing, but he can't, like he's allowed to write or do nothing, that's it. There's no other things he can do. great podcast with Tim Ferriss. Uh, I think maybe you talked about it there. Yeah, I'm super lucky that I don't have, um, I guess just me. <laughs> My clients can't. I'm going to say bug me. My clients can't get in here and do anything with me. Okay, I don't use this bar at all. I do use this though. Let's put that up here. Done. Now I can say do a full day's work in 90 minutes. I don't have that article. So let's capture it. It's one interesting question is at what point do you say, oh no, like I'm done don't need to keep taking more yeah he definitely does do drafts with pen and ink i know that he talked about his fountain pen and in that interview he talked about his fountain pen and his kid managing to shove it behind a stone fireplace that men would mean they have to take apart the entire house neil gaiman is one of my favorite authors and my kids enjoy them too so we've read a bunch not all of his works but a lot of them together i've got you can't see it but i've got my fiction shelf over there i have two or three copies of some of his books because one's like just the novel and one's like the illustrated novel that looked beautiful so I do enjoy everything I've read of him so far, and my kids have enjoyed it as well. What they're ready for, anyways. Mm-hmm. I think so too. I'm trying to think what my favorite one is. It might be. Now you're gonna force me to go get my illustrated copy of the book, I think. Okay, hang on. I'll get it. at the end of the lane. I got this copy here. I can make it bigger. Hang on. Make me bigger. For this. Ocean at the end of the lane. I have a no novel copy as well. This might be my favorite, but then you go to inside this one and it's got like beautiful pictures of like the people. So that's a cool book. Or the graveyard book. I think the graveyard book is the first one I listened to that I really liked. So that was a good one. I'm going to go put this one back now. Well, Neverwhere is really good as well. And I've got a bunch of his like adaptations of kids' fairy tales, like Snow Glass Apples. That was also pretty good. Like I enjoyed that, even though it's a much shorter book, clearly. It's just like a comic. I've read some of those with my daughter, my oldest daughter. She's more of the reader that's into the same stuff as me than some of my other children. 
My middle one is more into dinosaurs and she wants to be a paleontologist. She's like six. So, uh, what are we looking at now? This Hugh Culver book. Or Hugh Culver article. These stupid Facebook crap on the side. Can't read your article, Mr. Culver. Hmm. thinking I need to talk about in the course why you time block instead of just working out task managers. Well, I think that because task manager is easy just to pick the easiest task and time blocking kind of keeps you focused on the goal at hand. And everybody cites deep work. But I get it, like when I read deep work, it was like I read a book that finally said everything I'd been thinking. That's what it was. My headphone shut off every half hour for some unknown reason. Really nice set of Steel series too. I haven't watched any of the TV adaptations of his stuff. I just enjoyed the book. I actually like a really, I just have like a trade paperback of Neverwhere and I'd like to get it. I had it on audiobook. I love it on audiobook. That's one I haven't read with my oldest daughter yet. She's nine. She's not quite, I don't think she'll be ready for that one yet. Another favorite fiction author is Brandon Sanderson. I've liked almost everything he's done. I'm reading one now. Oh, I forget now what it's called. Um, to the Stars or Skyward? Skyward. And I'm not sure about that one, but it might just be the way it's written. It's written in the first person. I liked Ready Player One as well, but at the same time, it felt like a tough read because of that. Same with Mr. Penumbra's 24-hour bookstore. Felt like a hard one, but it was also written in first person. So we'll see. We'll see what I think of Skyward. I'm trying not to discount it because it's first person. I'd object to this you find time for. You don't find time for anything. You just can only choose to use your time appropriately or can value in a, in a way that brings value. Time blocking also appeals to me for the standpoint of um, Dave Ramsey does budgeting. And uh, I have not read Mark Forster's stuff. Dave Ramsey talks about giving your dollar uh, every penny a place to go. Mark Forster's. feel like I'm not on the right one. Maybe that's probably the right one. Yeah, it probably looks better. Secrets of productive people. Do you have an article or two that you'd recommend on that?
Let's see. That's not true, though. What he says right here were Newport. It's training wheels. It's not training wheels. That's what he does, too. Mark Forster. Cool. I'll grab that in a minute. I get, I get that I feel super frustrated though when that happens. It happens a lot with my kids, just because they're kids. Like, I don't know what I'm supposed to do with that. They're kids and my wife and life has to happen. I can hear them maybe coming through in a second to go pick up my other two kids from school. article you sent me. I can tag it right here. There you go. Thanks. I'll save that one. Come back to it later. Got an interesting book I want to get to called Algorithms to Live By. Who's that by? There you go. Hang on. Let me see if I can find it. Might be an interesting topic then too to go over this book. Algorithms to Live by The Computer Science of Human Decisions by Brian Christian and Tom Griffiths. Found that one. Where did I find that one even? Like I just looked at it on the Yeah, my local used bookstore. Just saw it on the shelf. Best time blocking apps. A calendar. Barking at the wrong tree. Do I have that book? Pest repeller. I'm pretty sure that's the wrong. Audiobook unabridged. <laughs> oh, that's excellent. Hardcover. That's better. I think I do have that actually. Yep, yeah, right there. Cool. So maybe I need to read that book too. I own it. Well, that's not uncommon. I own a lot of books. Doing our health insurance recently, and I was like, oh, look, I wonder how many books I have. And I just did like the rough math on literally the physical books I own, and it's probably $4,000 in books sitting over on shelves. Out of sight. Yeah, I can't really show you. The lights would be terrible. So maybe I need to read Barking Up the Wrong Tree to do the point thing is at a certain point you're just like I'm just collecting so many things that I don't know what to do with so I like that if you don't schedule your important work it increases the risk that your work won't get done what's this not what I wanted. That's fine. We'll deal with it. She used to have a whole meeting schedule system and I cut that out because I didn't want it anymore because I was just tired of People being able to get my time.
Okay, let's kill that. Yeah, absolutely. Definitely diminishing returns on reading more. I read like, I don't know, I think about 60 books this year. No, and there's a bunch of fiction in there, clearly, because we talked about fiction, but you're right. There's diminishing returns. I don't give up on them, but I'm more often, like say I'm reading deep work. What else is coming up next? Uh, I think I showed this off this morning, in this morning's stream. This terror, love, and brainwashing, attachment, and cults of totalitarian systems, like that seems more interesting to me than a productivity book or algorithms to live by it just seems more interesting to me than not i don't think i actually sent this link off to chat either best time blocking app plan stack mm. tick tick premium I like that one I actually use that one so sked pal I heard that as well I've decided how many time blocking apps I want to go through I'll just link this in here and I can refer to it later for other apps to use. I think productivity books like if you're really like looking at one specifically then like at a specific topic then that can be a really good book still but I'm not sure about it in general. Oh, okay, I like that one already. What's this? Let's copy this title out. It's a long one. The goal long term is I'll turn these into tasks and when I've gone through and like weeded them out into my course, like pulled the notes out of them, I'll check them off. So for that I'll just use this template. And I can just tick it off when I'm done. fallacy the fallacy that we think we're gonna do way better than we thought basically everything's gonna go easy so like that's so i think planning fallacy is an important note for this like without time blocking you fall into planning fallacy
Yeah, well, that's probably from Hooked, that question. And Parkinson's Law, yep, again. We've already had that, so I'm not gonna add this note there. Oh, maybe. Maybe I'll have the guard rails idea. You're welcome. If you have any other questions, okay, one of, my, one of my favorite features right now is this. It's just super cool. I'll go full screen for it. That'll look better here. Um, where'd it go? Local graph. That's the one. So you can start to see, and then I asked if we could have an adjuster. So that's two. Like, I think this, one of the things I wanted for a long time, I think the actual main graph view, the big one, is a waste of time. I'm not going to open it because I'm working but uh, that the main graph view over here is just a waste because you can't filter it but now that we have this local graph view oh stellar i'm super happy about that it makes it so much more useful for me that i don't even care about the filtering <laughs> anymore uh, as much that's not true because uh in my book notes i take notes and say like hey they referred to this book so it would be nice to see like who else referred to that book mm, although i could probably just like you know click through and find out it'd be interesting to be able to filter though by like a tag as in like a hashtag tag right like that uh and say like figure if i could do like who was the marriage and to read books right so what books hit those two tags that would be interesting at some point if we could get that i don't know if we will but i think some of that's gone uh we don't need it as much with um, the local graph Oh, like planning fallacy again. I don't agree with that. I was like junior developer at a job and I just kept saying like, well, okay, was well, your task more important than the ones I have here? And they'd always say, nope. So there you go. It was easy for them to say that whatever they had was just felt important it wasn't actually important not important enough to push off any work we had decided to do anyways i like that Let's start with the I already said this, I'm not going to take a note, but they acknowledge that you've got other stuff to do outside of just work. Atomic design. Yeah, I've been writing in Markdown for a long time, so Markdown is just how I... Brad Frost, look that up. Like even on my site, I write in Markdown and everything. Atomic Design by Brad Frost, there you go. Eh, it's a UI book. Not pertinent to what I'm doing now. Yeah, Markdown, I could see, like, someone who's not familiar with it or non-technical, I can say, see how they'd be like, oh, this is too much. I think that's interesting, too.
Also, they talk about spending an hour each day to free reactive things. I actually don't plan, to, sorry, uh, Wednesday and Thursday afternoons for reactive or for whatever the overflow is from Monday, Tuesday afternoons. Local links isn't links to files. See, I also work on, like, I'm on a Mac now, but I also, like, work on servers on Linux all the time. And actually, I, most of my work is done on my iPad. And then I SSH into a server and work with Terminal, right? Terminal. I'm just assuming, since you don't know Markdown, you don't know Terminal, so I can go, like... This is actually my site now. So I'm now like in my site. This is what I work in all day. And all my content. I'm not going to load my content because it's like 2,000 files, but that's what I work in all day. Yeah, I don't need it. So I can work Mac or um, iPad. I work iPad most times. I only stream with my Mac on Fridays now. I don't do anything else with my Mac most of the time. So when I do my task management review, I tag everything as this week, week. And then I do my time blocking. Schedule breaks, not just lunch. I don't schedule breaks necessarily inside stuff. I schedule it um, about like a Pomodoro timer, do that for me. No, you got Pomodoro. I go for a walk every day. Hmm. Oh, got a cop coming. Hang on. Yeah, I keep wanting to do Linux too, but maybe one day. I guess I work in Linux, I just don't actually see the GUI all the time. Ubuntu Linux is usually what I'm on. Oh. It's like between my morning stream and this stream, I actually like walked out to the grocery store and picked up a couple things and then had made lunch for my wife and my youngest daughter. And I plan that into like every day. I'm not gonna actually show you my. I think I can. Next week. This is my di my month, my time block. I read, I write, I go for a run. Actually, this won't happen because I'm going away all day Monday. Uh, I work for a client on Tuesday morning, and then I read, and I go for a run. I read, video script, run. Yeah, you can see kind of. That's what my week looks like all the time. You're old enough. Oh, okay. Well, there you go. I am not old enough for that, and I was actually a counseling major, so I didn't do anything like that at uni.
Oh, we're into some videos now. I have to shut off the chill music. Let me know how the sound turns out on some of this. If it's too loud for you or what? Because I'm not sure that I can tell. Looks like it's really low. Like Vancouver. So a few of you guys in my apartment tour video asked how I managed to keep my place so clean and tidy and some tips. And you know, I wanna say 90% or maybe like 95% of the times it does stay like that. However, it still gets like this sometimes. We've got exhibit A, exhibit B, exhibit C. We've got exhibit D. We've got exhibit A, B, C, D, E, exhibit E. This doesn't happen very often. I uh, just had a friend over yesterday, but uh, this, yeah, this is not okay. But before that, we gotta That's get a little sink. some tummy rubs. You want some tummy rubs, buddy? Hi, hello. All right, let's go for a walk, and then we can tidy up, okay? All right, let's go. All right, buddy, before we go, we gotta run Richard. Where is it? Where is he? Where is he? Where's Richard? There he is. Oh, Jasper, come here. I know. You know <laughs> Hi. Do you want to go for a walk? Do you want to go for a walk? All right, let's go. All right, so in this video, I want to talk about how I've been incorporating time blocking into my life for the past like six to seven years and some of the minimalism principles I've kind of integrated into my time blocking um, so that maybe you know you guys can start doing it as well or just take like little bits and pieces of it and just stop make it work for you hey hi buddy oh jasper you're so gross hi all right let's go back home <laughs> oh jesus get out of here get out of here jasper go <laughs> the main benefit i think of living in a studio apartment is the ease and quickness of cleaning like I could clean this entire apartment in less than 10 minutes and there you have it so yeah, when you don't have a lot of stuff you just can't make that much of a mess isn't that right Jasper all right Jasper you have a good sleep while I go to the gym okay <laughs> okay all right buddy I'm leaving can you sit can you pound it <laughs> good job all right <laughs> bye buddy have a good sleep <laughs> oh, good old growing machine Pipe. Oh, I just got our cup in here. Thanks. Did I get some uh, ice cubes in there as well? Thank you. Hello. Hi, hey, where's my present? Jasper, go get my present. <laughs> just wagging his tail in my clean dishes. Where's my present? Where's my present? Jasper? It's up here. Go get it. Hey, it's up here. Go get it. He doesn't get the present. Oh, here's my present. You know, I don't know why I keep getting the pike at Starbucks. It tastes like burnt doo-doo water. But you know me, I'm a slave to the caffeine. Anyways, let me stop. So I think the best way to talk about time blocking is actually show you guys how I do it uh, and just talk you guys through my thought process on why I do certain things. So I've been personally using Google Calendar synced up with my Apple Calendar for the past many, many years now, since my first year of university. Now, the reason I use the Apple Calendar is just so that it syncs across between all of my devices from my laptop iPad, phone, watch, and it just works very seamlessly. I know that some people prefer to use like a, just like an in-person written journal or planner. You know, I'm just way too clumsy of a person. I will either lose it, forget about it, damage it somehow. And you know, once it's gone, it's gone. Plus I don't like the fact that you can't send or request invites because I am that annoying ass friend that will literally send you an invite to go grab coffee. And yes, if you don't accept the invite, I'm not going. So you Thanks. better accept. There we go. They're back. 
the invite. So once you decide on the platform you're gonna use, next up you have to pick the categories that you're actually gonna be time blocking for. Now obviously this is gonna depend on what you have going on in your life. When I was in university, I had each of the classes separated into different calendars so I could easily see it, you know, because it would be color coded, see the different exam dates, when the papers were due, etc. When I was really focusing on my freelancing career, I had different things for like emails, calls, meetings, shoots, edits, etc. Um, if you're a stay-at-home mom, if you're working nine to five, it's all going to depend. I've been recently watching Thomas Frank's Productivity Masterclass on Skillshare, and he calls these categories life buckets, things like exams, classes, just general things you have going on in your life. So no matter what you call it, um, you just have to pick the categories that pertain to your current lifestyle. Speaking of Skillshare, a special thank you to Skillshare for continuously sponsoring this channel and allowing me to create content for you guys. If you guys haven't heard of Skillshare before, Skillshare is an online learning community where you can learn hundreds of different things, where you can explore, create, and collaborate with different people. They offer tons of different classes that are actually like designed for real life use. Plus, the best thing is that you can actually learn at your own pace handwritten animations on the eye to your calendar first. And being intentional is the main reason I got into minimalism. It wasn't about the aesthetic or the movement. It was just so that I can remove the distractions so I can really focus on what I wanted to. And I'm sure you guys have all seen the analogy of you have like two jars and you have like sand and little rocks and big rocks. But if you try to fit everything at the same time together, it's not going to fit. You have to put in like the big rocks first, then the medium, then pour the sand over, and that's how you're gonna make it fit. So it's pretty much the same. Um, personally for myself, I moved to Vancouver recently to really, really focus on my YouTube channel. That so that is exactly what I'm gonna put in first. So first I'm gonna put into the calendar uh, the videos that I'm gonna create. And I said that I'm going to do two videos per week and that is going to happen um so i put it all the way to the top so that i can see it uh all of the top events just means that it's an all-day event so it's not necessarily something that's going to happen between like 9 to 11 or something like that it's just going to happen on that day and then next for the channel we have to do some writing so i'm just going to put a w so when it comes to anything regarding like the creative process, the writing involves like brainstorming, just thinking of ideas for the video and actually kind of uh, thinking about what the actual vlog will look like. So that whole planning process takes a lot longer than you think. Um, you really can't get that done in an hour or two. So I usually like to block off four to six hours, something like that. So let's block that off. And then same thing for, you know, the recording that might happen within a few hours um possibly on that day and then bleeds over into the next whatever happens uh and then editing and uploading takes another few hours as well um so edit, two hours for upload, a 15 minute video for me you this week. that is typically what my planning process for youtube videos look like that is for a tuesday video sometimes you know let's say the writing is a lot shorter for a friday video it kind of happens like on the go um, so that means it's just going to be a lot more recording time um, on that Thursday and usually tends to bleed into the actual day that I'm posting as well. Uh, and then edit and upload. I can usually edit a vlog in about two, three hours at this point. Next up, we have the things that we really have to do. Now for me, that includes walking Jasper because I'm the only one that takes care of him. Um, so I try to walk him at least one and a half hours to two hours every single day. So I'm going to space that out evenly between all of the days and really try to space it out. And a lot of the times when I'm recording, I'm also like walking Jasper. I edit a lot of the times either at a coffee shop or at home um, so that either I can take Jasper with me to the coffee shop, walk him there and then time up outside if the weather is nice, or I just work from home, spend time with him, uh, and then when I need more of like a stretching break, uh, I just take him as well. All right, so for myself, next thing I got is just training some clients. So I recently started training clients again part-time, uh, about 10, 15-ish hours a week. So obviously that's something I have to do. Um, so, da, 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 clients. Uh, and then obviously I would put in like the actual name of the clients. 
uh, and then just kind of block them off whenever they have their appointments. Uh, now, because I am doing this part time, thankfully, I don't have like uh, a crazy normal personal trainers schedule. My Monday mornings are kind of rough because I do teach like a 6 a.m. class. So I have to get up very early, walk Jasper, teach and then come back and walk Jasper again. Um, but that's what you got to do. We're in that hustle. You know, I also make sure that Jasper doesn't stay at home alone for more than five hours. You know, he's perfectly fine being home alone. However, I just don't feel good about it in my soul. Um, hmm. So if those days do happen, I do have a membership at a doggy daycare that I can leave him in for up to 14 hours per day. So let's say on a Tuesday, it's a very busy recording day. Um, I'll just change that to drop drop off Jasper. And then the next one being pick up Jasper. That way, um, you know, I just don't have to worry about walking him throughout the day if I have a full day of meetings, editing, etc. Another thing you really have to consider is removing distractions uh, that goes hand in hand with minimalism is that a lot of people are going to want to chat grab coffee pick your brain etc um, and that's great like i love hanging out with my friends and just chatting about absolutely nothing or everything um, but you really have to be intentional you know if you get a call from your buddies they want to get white girl wasted uh, on a tuesday night and you have clients wednesday morning is that the best thing or, you know, you see that Monday night they want to get white girl wasted, but you have a full day of filming, editing and recording Tuesday. So you just really have to prioritize what you want to focus on uh, because there's no way you can fit everything into your week. Hence why I really enjoy time blocking because it's just a very clear way you can visualize different aspects of your life. So, you know, let's just put in some coffee meetings. We can put it into our recording because maybe that's a portion of the vlog. So meaning that like, you know, just because it's an R doesn't mean it's completely blocked off for you to be alone. Obviously it's a vlog, so you have to find things to put in it. Um, so coffee three times a week, very normal for me. And it's honestly more of like a social aspect for me. It's not like I need caffeine in my blood at least three times a week from a bougie specialty pour over coffee shop. No, it's more of like, I like going to a new novel place and you know, chilling with my friends. So there is that prioritize. Another thing I obviously put into my life is my fitness. So I have a separate category for it. So I'm currently taking like a temporary break from CrossFit because the new CrossFit gym um, in my neighborhood hasn't opened yet. Um, so I'm just going back to like a typical bodybuilding split, uh, which is honestly have been pretty fun. So it's an upper one and an upper two and a lower day. Uh, and you know, I can kind of break it up into wherever in terms of you know sometimes i get my best ideas during a workout for some reason and also you know a part of my vlog may have recording in the filming so there is a lot of overlap with just the nature of what i do um uh, but i mean obviously you just have to make it work for you and then i have a lower day I personally really enjoy visualizing it so that I can see, oh, I did do upper one on this day. Maybe I should give my shoulders a little bit of break this time um, and just, oh, that is not gonna work. Upper one, hmm, let's just fit it into my filming. See, if you see that the it's not going to work, I'm gonna have to either wake up at 5 a.m. go for my workout before I walk Jasper um, or do it at the very evening. I'd rather get up early. Um, so that's, you know, kind of my thought process between how I juggle things around. Um, you have your main priority, then you have the things you have Kosh. to do and you Kosh. have to just, you Kosh. have to make it work. It? That's just really why I like time blocking. Now, before I used to I be not very, like, you know, about. very, very specific. I would also include like transportation time. I would incorporate eating time. I would incorporate chilling time, but instead of like sectioning off chill, you know, relax, I just prefer to leave it blank because visually when i look at something and it has a color i just associate it with me doing something so i'd rather just leave it blank so that i know that i have space to breathe if i just look at a full calendar with just everything is packed with colors i don't know it just... yeah i think i like that one and take that note those notes i took
don't know his name. like some of that at least the intentionality part is good again this is actually my the part of the notes I'm looking forward to least because videos just take a long time to get through they don't speed up very well you can't skim them just gotta watch them so I watch most of my YouTube stuff while I'm like doing dishes or something and if it's really good I'd stop for a minute It is no secret that Elon Musk has an insane work schedule, working more than double the hours of the average full-time worker. And, and you know now I'm kind of in the 80 to 90, which is more manageable. Uh, but but you know that if you divide that by two, it's only like you know maybe 45 hours per company, which is not not much if you when there's a lot of things going on. You're like a slacker. I mean, you're really <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And that time is split between many different projects. Most of it goes to his main companies, Tesla and SpaceX, but he also spends time on things like The Boring Company and OpenAI, and of course, making flamethrowers. Add to that the fact that, according to Ashley Vance's biography on him, he spends four days a week with his five children, and you've got what is possibly one of the busiest and most hectic daily schedules of anybody on this planet. Now, in contrast to the video that I did about Ben Franklin just a few months ago, with Elon Musk, we don't have a source that gives us a super granular look at his daily schedule other than a few tidbits that he's revealed in interviews add that one to my notes he spends about 80 percent of his time on design and engineering despite what most people might think i think a lot of people think i, I must spend a lot of time with media or, or on businessy things but actually almost uh, almost all my time like 80 percent of it is spent on engineering design but what we do know about is the method that he uses to keep his schedule organized and to plan out his day. Musk actually plans his day in five minute increments and has everything pre-planned in advance. This is a technique called time boxing. And it's actually used by lots of other people, including Bill Gates and Cal Newport, though Cal calls it time blocking. Essentially time boxing, or time blocking if you want to call it that, or heck, time boxing, I'm not gonna stop you, is the practice of setting a fixed amount of time for each task that you have to do and integrating those blocks of time into your daily schedule. I use this technique a lot with my own work and because people like Musk and Bill Gates and Cal Newport and many others find it so useful, today I wanted to break down exactly how you can use time boxing most effectively in your own work. So let's start with the obvious question. Why use this technique? Why time box your schedule? And I know there are gonna be critics of this technique right off the bat who are gonna say, scheduling your entire day in advance basically makes you a robot, dude. Why would you wanna do that? And I gotta say, number one, you humans, I mean, we humans really give robots a bad rap sometimes. But number two, this is kind of looking at it from the wrong perspective. Yes, scheduling your day in advance does mean that you're gonna be adhering to a predetermined plan and that you're gonna have less unstructured free time. But as you might know, unstructured free time can sometimes be a bad thing. As Parkinson's law states, work tends to expand to fill the time allotted for it. So essentially, time boxing creates a useful limitation that can actually make you more productive. First and foremost, it takes a lot of the choice out of the moment of what you're gonna work on because you are adhering to a plan, so you spend less time figuring out what you're gonna do in the first place. And number two, because you have a limited amount of time, you aren't going to waste it. You're gonna be focusing a lot more intently. And in the case of people like Musk and Bill Gates, they probably need to use this technique. They've got so many commitments, so many balls in the air that without pre-planning their schedule and keeping it really really organized, things are bound to slip through the cracks. Okay, so if I've got you convinced, let's talk about how to use time boxing. And the simplest way to do it is the way that I like to do it, where I write out my daily plan either on my whiteboard or on a piece of notebook paper, and I just estimate the amount of time each task is going to take. So I don't actually put it on a calendar and give it start and stop times of the day. I just say, this is going to take me 20 minutes, and then I'm going to move on to the next thing. If you're somebody like me, who doesn't have a whole lot of scheduled, fixed commitments that start and stop at specific times, 
times, then that can work really, really well. And it might also work if you're in school or you're an employee and you have like a specific block of time when you already know you're gonna be doing things and then you have like another block of time that's kind of freed up. And if this method does work well for you, you don't have to do it on paper because there is an app called 3030 on the iPhone that I have used several times before. Now, I gotta say, I really don't like the design of this app. The font they chose in this app is kind of terrible, but it is one of the few apps that lets you set a specific time that you're going to work on a task and then kind of like build a little itinerary of timed tasks that you can then go through. And I used to use this a lot in college when I had a lot of homework assignments to get through. Now, if you are an Android, I don't believe 3030 is on the Android platform, but there is an app out there called Do Now that seems to have a similar function. Now, if you are the kind of person that has a schedule with lots of predetermined sort of commitments already too, and have gaps Mac in between them, or iOS. you just want to have more structure in your life, then you actually might find it useful to use a calendar for your time boxing, to set specific start and stop times for your tasks. This is the way that Cal Newport says he does it in his blog post on the subject. And if you're a student that has a lot of little gaps of time in between classes, I think this is the way to go for you. Either way, if you're going to use this technique successfully, then the number one thing you're going to need to learn how to do is probably properly estimate how long tasks are going to take you to complete. And the bad news is that you and me both are human beings. We both like ingesting organic matter, we both like using our respiratory systems to convert oxygen into carbon dioxide, and we are both naturally bad at estimating how long things are going to take. Did I mention I'm not a robot? We're all susceptible to what's called the planning fallacy. Oh, which planning fallacy again. Human beings tend to make over-optimistic like predictions for so how far. long things are going to take. And there was actually some research done at the University of Waterloo in Canada on this phenomenon. Students were asked to make two Ooh. different types of time predictions. That's how human beings tend to make over-optimistic predictions for how long things are going to take. And there was actually some research done at the... Research gate. Ugh, not gonna let me do it, is it? All right. Let's get that paper. Totally not using SciHub to get the paper. I would never do something like that. Oh, not found. Let's try it this way. It's fine. Okay, just like I'm totally recording. People are seeing this live. You want to come say hi or you're good? Really? See, smile a little. Hi. <laughs> you want to come say hi for a second? This is my oldest daughter, Eden. She likes hi. The Graveyard Book by Neil Gaiman. Right? Yeah. We always call it Bod. You have a good day at school? Yep. Cool. Did you go upstairs? Yep. I'll be up in a bit. Okay, guys. Okay. Just going to finish this one video, and I think I'm going to be done. Okay. Oh, I can read the full text. I don't know if I'm going to get that. You locked yourself out? Smooth move. University of Waterloo in Canada on this phenomenon. Students were asked to make two different types of time predictions. One was a best case scenario prediction where literally everything went right, and the other one was for the average case scenario, your average everyday run of the mill experience. And the researchers found that predictions for both types of scenarios were virtually identical. Which
which showed them that human beings tend <laughs> to picture the best case scenario where literally nothing goes wrong when they're trying to predict what's gonna happen in an average everyday case. So even though you know in the back of your head that when you try to get to work on an average day, there's traffic or somebody's driving in front of you really slow on their phone, there's a grandma in front of you, when you predict how long it's gonna take to get to work, you picture the scenario where there's barely any traffic at all and everything is just perfect. And this cognitive bug is not very congruent with successful time boxing because if you tend to make super over optimistic predictions for how long each task is going to take then you are going to end up getting less than half of what you plan to get done actually done so one way to get better at estimating how long your tasks are actually going to take is to track your time the app that i personally use for this is called toggle which is available both on computers and mobile devices and essentially you just tell it what you're going to do you can give it a tag if you want and then you start it and stop it once you're done i found that if you track your time with nice harvest like this, that right over here. time you start to get a record of how long things actually take and you can start to see what the discrepancy is between your original estimations and the actual data. I actually need and to there change this time block that's been running while we've been streaming from estimations. what it is to also, the when you're sitting down time blocking your day and you're research. estimating how long your tasks are going to take it's going to be really helpful if you split your bigger tasks into smaller subtasks. Not only will this make your task list more action oriented and clear but it's also going to help you with your estimations because it is always easier to estimate how long a small well-defined task is going to take. All right, so now we have to deal with what is possibly the most legitimate objection to time boxing, which is how do you deal with interruptions? How do you deal with things that you couldn't plan for or things that just pop up and interrupt your work? Tom, the Secret Service wants you again. <sighs> again? Well, as Dwight D. Eisenhower once said, planning <laughs> is everything, plans are nothing. So when your plan gets interrupted, revise that plan. Cal Newport's time blocking blog post actually provides a great example of how to do this. He splits his notebook paper into columns and uses the first column as his original plan. Then if plans change or something gets interrupted during the course of the day, he just revises the plan in the next column and then continues on from there. He also advises designating certain blocks of time as what he calls reactionary time. Blocks of time that are literally set up for dealing with those things that come up during the course of the day that you didn't plan for. Now, sometimes things are gonna pop up that you have to deal with right now, and they might be in a time block that was planned for something else, and in those cases, you're gonna have to roll with the punches. But if something comes up that you can deal with later, then a reactionary time block is the perfect time to take care of it. One thing that I would add here is don't be discouraged if you're unable to follow your plan to the letter. Life is inherently unpredictable sometimes, but that doesn't mean planning out your day is a flawed tactic. No tactic works 100% of the time. Just do your best to adapt, and then at the end of the day, analyze your plan and see if what interrupted it was something that you need to account for in the future or if it was just a one-time thing. And that brings me to my last but most crucial piece of advice for using this technique effectively avoid the temptation to overschedule your day. Yes, Elon Musk is putting in 80 to 90 hour work weeks juggling a zillion things at once, but number one, that dude is a monster. And number two, if you have difficult work on your plate that requires a lot of intense concentration and creativity, sometimes that's all you can do in a given day. Don't try to squeeze work like that into a tiny sliver of time in a day that's already taken up with errands and admin work. As the authors of the book, The Four Disciplines of Execution point out, the more you try to do, the less you actually accomplish. So take advantage of the productivity benefits that come from the limitations of time boxing, but give that difficult creative work the space it deserves and save that mentally easier work for a concentrated batch day. And while we're talking about that more cognitively trivial admin work, if you do happen to want to make that more efficient, then one thing that you might want to try is Audible, uh. which is the world's best place to download and listen to a whole lot of attention in itself. Audible has an unmatched library of book. You can exchange it with no questions asked and promise to 500, 500 on your phone. This month, I'm gonna recommend one of my absolute favorite books of all time, which is Bill Bryson's A Short History of Nearly Everything, which I own both in print and as an audiobook. This is the book that really did the most to rekindle my interest in science, and it also expanded my appetite for learning in different areas. And beyond that motivational aspect, this is really just one of the best and most entertaining overviews of science that I've ever come across. And I think that anyone who wants to be more well-rounded should definitely experience it. So if you wanna start listening to that book or any other audiobook of your choosing, once again, head on over to audible.com slash Thomas or text Thomas to 500, 500 on your phone to start that free trial and get your free audiobook download. Big thanks to Audible for sponsoring this video and helping to support this channel. And as always, guys, thank you so much for watching. If you don't want to miss future videos, definitely get subscribed right there. And you can also download a free copy of my book on how to earn better grades right over there. You might. All right.
think that's going to be about it for today. Thanks for joining me. Let's make sure I put that in there. Thanks for joining me today, uh, the Punky Mosquito. And I know there's a few others from time to time that we're probably doing the same thing again next Friday at 1 p.m. Pacific. And usually yeah, somewhere between 9 and 10, I start a morning stream where I'm looking through some books. This morning we looked at Scarcity uh, by Sentil Mahali and I forget the other one. And Reclaimed by Andy Steiger, which is an apologetics-like faith Christian book. That's what you kind of went through my notes this morning on those two. Eventually, I'm going to get through, catch up to all my like 70, 80 books that should be in this type of format. And then I will be done with them. Yeah. Thanks for watching, man. Have a good one.